Hi, welcome to LibreOffice's video tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn what is LibreOffice, why do we use it, and third, how to get it. So first of all, we will Google LibreOffice and we will be shown these results. Now we will visit first and second link. First link leads us to LibreOffice.org, which is the official web page of LibreOffice. Second, we will go to LibreOffice Wikipedia page. So we will start with Wikipedia page of LibreOffice. So according to Wikipedia, LibreOffice is a free and open source Office suite. By a suite, we mean that it consists of multiple softwares developed by the Document Foundation, which is the organization behind LibreOffice. It was forked from OpenOffice.org, which means that the source code for LibreOffice was taken from open office which is also a open source office suite so so stable release by which mean, we mean that the the current version is 4.2 which was released 3 days ago on 20th february it was written in c++ java and python operating system multiple operating systems are supported so it's good for mac windows Linux, BST, so all the platforms supported, all the majorly used platforms are supported, supported. So Core Studio, Core i3, Core i7, Core i5, Core Duo, these are the majorly used PC uh, processors which are very much supported by LibreOffice. It's available in 114 languages. Official website is www.libreoffice.org. So included applications which makes it a suit are Writer, Calc, Impress, Draw, Math, Base. So what is Writer? Writer is a word processor with similar functionality and support to Microsoft Word. And it's very extensively used for, for making letters, document, doing documentations. Calc is a spreadsheet program which is very similar to Microsoft Excel. Impress is a presentation software which is um, used for making presentations. It resembles PowerPoint. Draw is a vector graphics editor, just like Microsoft Visio, and it it's it also looks like early version of CorelDRAW. Math is used for for creating and editing mathematical formulae, which can be used in Writer Calc. Base is a database management program very much similar to Microsoft Access. So now we will see how the LibreOffice website looks like. So this is the website. According to it, it's a free office suite. It consists of these six softwares. We will be discussing Writer, Calc and Impress primarily. So it's a fun project so if you are a coder or if you are aspiring coder you can download the source code of LibreOffice and you can work upon it to extend the functionalities of LibreOffice and to meet your requirements it's, it, it's built by community and if you want to get into the community just visit the website and click on join us today and you will be part of thousands strong community so for downloading it just click on this download library office now it will automatically detect the operating system of your computer and it will show the download packages available for your operating system you can also donate money to it if you really like it and this icon will will this link will take you to the main website of LibreOffice. LibreOffice software is free while Microsoft Office Suite is paid so you will be saving a lot of money which can be a good thing so it automatically detected the operating system so which is library library of so it's library office mac os x so 
it's showing that library office mac os x x86 underscore 64 10.8 or nearly near required version so this is the version name of library office which is compatible to my systems operating system so all you need all you need to do is click on this main installer and the download will begin very easy to do, do that also if if you want to download it for some other operating system then you can just see over here we have windows we have linux so for linux if you are using fedora then you can click on rpm if you are using debian based uh, or linux then you can just click on deb x86 is for 32 bit computers and x 86 underscore 64 is for 64 bit processor and platform operating system. So, if you are using 64 bit of 64 bit processor and operating system, then you should download this one underscore 64 one, not the x86. Thank you for watching the video. Hi, welcome to Library Office's uh, video tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be learning what is library office and why do we use it so library office is suit of uh, different softwares uh, which is used for creating some kind of document so for example if you want to create a, some kind of word document then you will be using library office's uh, writer if you want to create a, uh, spreadsheets then you will be using calc and if you want to create some kind of presentation then you will be clicking on uh, presentation or impress so in following videos we will be starting with writer and then we will move to calc and then we will move to impress thank you for watching the tutorial welcome to library offices video tutorial series in this tutorial we will be starting with library office writer so so to start with we need to understand the user interface of library office so let's start it so at the top of the screen we can see uh, there is this menu menu bar which contains all the menu items and sub menu items which we will be exploring in the coming videos at the title we can see this is the name of the document since we didn't save the document there is this entitled but as soon as we will save the document it will show the name of the document separated by the name of the software just below the title there is a set of shortcuts shortcut icons which perform very specific tasks so if you will hover on any of them then it will show the name of the task they perform so if you if you will hover on this then it shows format paintbrush so it copies the format of any particular text to an intended place. At the left and the top, we can see we have rulers which help us to set the margins or tab settings. So it helps us to really measure the uh, document. This is this white area is is actually the place where we enter the text or the images so it, so it is one of the most important thing or part of library office writer besides that there is the status bar at the bottom of the screen which shows miscellaneous details about the document so this shows number of pages slash so the page we are currently on slash number of pages available in this document number of words or characters in this document then which kind of language we are using in this document besides that at the bottom right there is this zooming option so if you want to zoom the page then you can just scroll it towards left or towards right to increase the level of zoom so in the next video we will be uh, starting with a discussion on shortcuts available and thereafter we will be starting with menu items and thereafter 
we will start working on creating some useful documents. Thank you for watching the video. Hi, welcome to Library Office Writer's video tutorial series. In the past video, we understood the user interface of the Library Office Writer. And in this video, we will be starting with discussion on number of shortcuts available in Library Office Writer. So to start with, uh, we have lots of icons and we have grouped them into very meaningful category. For example, starting from new to PDF, it's all about document manipulation. For example, if you want to create a document, a new document, so you just have to click on the down arrow and select any of these. So if you want to create a text document, then you, you will click on text document. If you want to create a spreadsheet, then spreadsheet, then presentation. If you want to create presentation, then you will click on presentation like this. Or if, maybe if you want to in, create a new spreadsheet, then you will click on spreadsheet and this is how it will appear. Now, this is used for opening any existing file. So in case you already have a document which you have to modify or add content to, then you will open the, click on this and then you will choose the location from where you want to open it. Then if you have made some kind of changes in the document then you can save the document so for saving the document you have to click on this since we haven't made any changes in this document so the 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 save button is disabled but once we will make some kind of changes in this document this will be enabled this will be active icon so as we can see now it's an active one so if you will click over here then it will be saving a new document since it wasn't ever say before then there is this fourth option which is document as email so if you want to say send the document as email then you will click on that on this icon just to create and send this document into through email Then there is edit file so there are times when the file is not ready for editing and if you want to edit the file then you will click on this icon since it is already enabled for editing there is no need for that so it's disabled then there is PDF so if you click on this there are times when you want to convert a document into PDF so library office is equipped with PDF conversion utility so you, all you have to do is click on this icon select you where you want to save the PDF file and it will be saved so you now you'll be having two copies first is the document file second one is PDF file so thank you for watching the video in the next video we'll be covering print previews Hi, welcome to Library Office Writer's video tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will start with what is print preview and how to print the document very easily. So let's say you have a default printer installed in your computer and you want to give print out immediately. Then all you need to do is click on this button and the print will be sent immediately. Yeah. It will not ask for anything, it will just take the default settings, layout, page layout and everything and the page the printout command will be sent. If you want to know how the actual print will look like, then you will go to page preview. So if you click on this it will show you how the document will appear and when you're done with that you can just close preview to return to your normal document so in this video we learned 
how to take the printout and how to see the page preview. In the next video, we will start with auto automatic spell check and how to use dictionary to check the spellings in Lever Office Writer. Thank you for watching the video. So, welcome to Lever Office Writer's video tutorial series. In this video, we will discuss about how to check the spellings of the word document and how to enable or disable automatic spell checker so we can see there are two icons with the check mark and abc return so first one is for for spelling grammar so what by it we mean that it will show the whole text available in the word document and then what are the kind of suggestions or what are the mistakes available within this word document so since we haven't done anything in this so it will not show anything but if we have enter if we will enter some some random text then obviously it will start working so now we have written five words three are grammatically wrong alphabet the spellings are wrong and the last two are right so if we just try to check if the spell checker can detect the right words is wrong then since uyg yuk is not a valid word it will suggest alternatives but since so let's consider muggy to be the alternative for this word then just select the word and say correct and then it's replaced with muggy because muggy is something which we selected and now we want uhu to be um, replaced with ahu then just correct uhu let's say chihuahua So now we all have the correct words, the correct according to the dictionary available in LibreOffice. What automatic spell checker does is, so in case you will just ty start typing something, it will automatically check if the spellings within the documents are correct or not. So if we disable this, then it won't show anything because now the spellings are unchecking uh, checked automatically so if we really need to check then we need to click on that on the first icon to really check the spellings so the best method would be to to enable the automatic spell checker and how do we know if it is selected or not it's slightly embossed it's slightly darkened which means that it's selected so as of now the automatic spell checker is enabled which is the default property in library office writer thank you for watching the video in the next video we'll discuss about how to cut copy paste the content within library office writer hi welcome to library office writers video tutorial series in this tutorial will be exploring how to copy the format of one text item into another text item so for example here we have three sentences and we want to change formatting of second and third so all we need to do is we have we need to select the text whose formatting we have to copy to another set of words then click on this format paint brush which looks like paint brush and select the text whose formatting you want to change so now earlier it had some different formatting but it has been changed which is identical to to this text this is something which we normally do when we create some kind of documents 
very frequently used utility so now if you want to copy the format of this text to the second one then we need to select it again and now it has been changed so first step is to select the text whose formatting you want to copy and then click on the brush and select the text to which you want to change the formatting so now formatting of uh, line 1 has been changed has been copied to this one and this is exactly what we were looking for thank you for watching the video hi welcome to library office writers video tutorial uh, in the past video we learned how to copy the formatting of one text into another now we will be understanding what does undo or redo does so let's say we make some changes to this document which is let's write let's type hello this is being skilled now we added some text to this document now we want to undo we want to go back to its original state so what what is what was the last thing which we did we added the text the word called skilled now if you will press undo it will show that it will remove the full stop and then skilled and then being then the then the space and then being then a space then is now if we want to redo it we want to return to original state step by step then we will click on redo it will it will uh, redo that space and then the word then a space then a word to its uh, original state so this is the function of undo and redo very frequently used when we when we do lots of documentation when we create documents then accidentally we may we make some mistakes and we want to return to original state and that's when we use undo or redo thank you for watching the video in the next video we will be discussing about how to create hyperlinks hi in this tutorial we will learn how to create a hyperlink in library office writer so step one is to select the text which you want to convert into a hyperlink then click on the shortcut which says hyperlink it looks like a globe over a document so click on it there are many fields and we have to just see if hyperlink type is written over there then select the web because we will we want the hyperlink to be leading us to a web page and the in front of target just type being skilled.com or any website you want the user the reader to go to then click on apply and then close so before that uh, in front of text we can see being skilled so being skilled is will be the text which will be converted into a hyperlink so whenever you will click on being skilled this text it will lead to a website called beingskilled.com and then close so as we can see the color has changed to blue which means that it has been converted into a hyperlink and when you will hover over the the text it will show click to open hyperlink beingskill.com so this is how we create a hyperlink in LibreOffice so let, let's try converting this text into a hyperlink as well so just select the text click on hyperlink just type in the website's name click on apply
and close and as we can see this has been converted into a hyperlink and we can see google.com is also written which is the which is the hyperlink thank you for watching the video in next video we will cover how to create tables in library office writer hi in this video we will learn how to create a table in library office writer so all we need to do is click on the table shortcut and it will open a pop-up window just which says insert table so we need to enter the tables name let's type it being skilled and let's say we want to uh, have four columns and ten rows with a heading and let's insert it so now we have four columns ten rows so we can just add random text in it three four five six seven eight nine ten we can align them if you want we can change the color just to make it look better now if you want to remove some rows or insert new columns we can see there are shortcuts on the bottom so this says insert row so whenever we will click on this it will insert a new row and if we want we can insert column as well so as we can see so the place where we have the cursor the column will be added to the right so if you want to add columns to the right of this column then we will click here so now the column has been created between 5 and 8 or column 1 and column 3 which was second column now if you want to delete rows then just select then select the row which you want to delete and then press here and the row will be created deleted and same goes for delete column so now we are deleting the columns earlier we had about four columns primarily now we are having only three columns we can just delete it as, as well now we have two columns we can also resize it according to the requirement by pulling the line the column border towards right or towards left we will play with uh, tables option in the following videos as well thank you for watching the video hi in this video we will learn how to change the font and font size of the text so for step one is to select the text whose font we want to change and then there is a huge list of fonts installed in the system and select any of the font which you think will be good for your document so for example here we have selected book antigua and now we want to change the font of this this part which we have selected to let's say Intel mono and font of this to Bra Braga Tokyo now we want to change the font size so for that we need to select the text again and change it to let's say 24 so now it has changed to 24 while other text is of font size 12 now if you want to change the change it to 15 then we can do that
by selecting any value. So you can change the font and font size to your requirements, whatever suits your document's requirements or whatever pleases you. Thank you for watching the video. In next video, we will learn how to format the text, be it bold, italic, or adding underline to it. Hi, in this video, we will learn about formatting of text using the shortcuts available. Now, let's say we want to create a headline, to type a headline, then we can just type this is a headline and generally headlines are bold and they have larger size as compared to the other text content so let's make it 32 so now this looks like a headline now let's say we want to make certain text portion as italic to differentiate this portion of text with other text content now if you want to and add underline to something to some text which happens to be really really important then we can just underline it by by pressing this shortcut so this is how we change the formatting of the text so making it bold making it italic making it underline to make the content of the text more visually appealing very as in documentation presentation is very important and this is how we do the formatting thank you for watching the video in the next video we will learn how to do different kinds of alignments be it left alignment right alignment center alignment or justified in this tutorial we will learn how to do a text alignment in library office writer so we are given four options of aligning the text in library office writer first is align left second is centered third is align right and fourth is justified and as we can see in inside this icons there is also alignment of text so we can just see and observe which kind of alignment they are offering so when we will hover off on any of these then it will show like since the text is aligned towards left it is aligned left in this text is aligned in center in this text is aligned right and this is justified the text is aligned on both left and right side so let's see how it works so in left uh, alignment entire text is flushed towards left side and it's kind of ragged towards right while in the right alignment the text is flushed towards the right side and it's ragged at the left side in center alignment it is ragged in both directions if the data or text is not completely filled while it maintains a symmetry at the center while in justified the text is flush towards left and right side equally and so it's like left aligned as well as right aligned so let's see how it works so we have this random text and we want to make it left aligned so all we need to do is select the text and then click on align left to change the alignment towards left now if you want it to be on the center then click on center if you want it to be on the right side then click on right and if you want it to be justified then now it's justified it's flush towards left as well as towards right side it looks really good um, so generally when we 
prepare some kind of documentation entire text is justified thank you for watching the video hi in this video we will learn how to do numbering of the list items so let's say uh, we have this kind of list and we want to add number numbers to it so just select the text and click on numbering on or off and as we can see each list item now has a number associated with it now if we want if we don't want number but we want bullets instead then we can just select bullets and it, the numbers will be gone and bullets will be there now as we know as we can see we have lots of list items and sub list items now we want it to be indented so just click on increase indent and now they are a sub item and let's say uh, let's see over here we have to indent it as well and these will be indented indented twice because these are sub sub item and we are just changing changing it now as you can see this is a list then this is a list item one and then there are two sub list items then a list item two and three and then there is sub item and there is sub sub item and there is this list item three so this is how we indent and create lists in library office writer we can have either numbering or bullets to make to differentiate to make it very easy to differentiate between each list item and to keep count of these list item thank you for watching the video in this video we will learn how to change the color of the font how to add background color and how to highlight the text so we will start with changing font color so all we need to do is select the text and click on down arrow just as adjacent to a or it's called font color then click and choose any of the font available so let's say um, we are selecting green for this is important we will choose red for this is super important and this is awesome will be colored blue so now as we can see we have changed the color of the font by selecting the text and choosing any of the color available in the palette now if you want to highlight the text then all we need to do is select the text which needs to be highlighted and then click on highlighting and choose any of the color available so now in this case we have selected the text and it has been highlighted now if you want to change the color of the highlight and make it green then just drag and select the portion till where you want to highlight so now as we can see the color of highlighting has been changed and this is important has been highlighted as green light green and let's make it bit pink yeah so now it's visible so this is how we change the color of the font and highlight the text now if you want to add background color then all we need to do is select it and select the area where you want to fill or add background select it and then just select a portion
select the text and click on background color and the background color will be changed so since it was having white color now it has been replaced with purple color now suppose we want to change the background color of last row then we all we need to do is select the text select the area and then choose any of the color available in it so this is how we changed the background color uh, one thing we need to note is we can't use highlighting for this purpose as highlighting is used only for text and not for uh, tables or any other figures thank you for watching the video hi in this tutorial we will learn how to convert a document into a PDF file so we are using LibreOffice Writer it holds valid for LibreOffice Calc and Impress as well now we, we need to convert this document into a PDF so first of all we will open the document or create a document normal document and enter the content or whatever it is and now what we will do is we will go to file and we will click on export as PDF now we have got lots of settings over here and let's try to understand um, important ones so in range so let's suppose we have 100 pages in our document and we want only pages 6 to 60 so the PD file which will be converted will be having pages from 6 to 60 images in this the exported file either there can be a lossless compression which means the quality will be very high but the file size will also be very high when we talk about JPEG compression it means that the image quality of image quality will be reduced to the percentage we define obviously the size will also be reduced of the file so in case you want high quality photographs in PDF file then you will choose lossless compression and if you want if you are concerned about the file size then you will compress it to reduce the quality and therefore reduce the file size so let's keep it 50 or let's create a new very high quality PDF file now if you want to make it signed then you could click on signed so what it will do is it will create a vertical um, watermark of green color which we will see once the file is exported now we'll click on let's enter the bookmark's name and initial document initial view we have panes now we can just have bookmarks on the left side or thumbnails and the page this is how it will look like fit in window if you if you want to make it zoomed a bit zoomed then and security means if you want to keep password of your document when someone opens a file it will ask for a password so if you want that to happen then you will set a open password and if you want that no one can modify the file permissions without knowing the password then enter the password over here so it's like set permission password now export the file to the text extension required now let's keep it text 6 dot pdf we will go to and 
open the document this is how it is looking like it is looking the watermark is at the behind while the text is there and this is very high quality PDF without any distortion at all so this is the process of converting a document a library office document into a PDF file thank you for watching the video hi welcome to library office tutorial in last tutorials we learned about the shortcuts available in library office writer now we will be discussing about frequently used menu items so in this tutorial we will discuss about how to save as the document into windows compatible format windows office or Microsoft Office compatible format. So by default, Library Office saves the files in extensions ODS, ODT, and ODP. Where ODS means Open Document Spreadsheet, ODT means open document text and ODP means open document presentation so to ensure because these formats can't be opened in Microsoft Office and if we need to open them then we need to save this file as either DOC or XLS or presentation or PPT depending on the softwares we are using so in this we will just save as the document so by default if the if there is a text document then it will be ODT but we need to save it as Microsoft Word 97 2000 XP 2003 dot DOC and dot XLS for Excel and dot PPT for presentation this particular format has the least compatible compatibility issue while DOCX has more compatibility issues than DOC so ideally we should use Microsoft Word 97-2000-XP-2003.DOC So now as we can see and the file is renamed as test 6.doc so a duplicate file is is created using doc dot using save as with a new name dot the extension we required so in this we required dot doc thank you for watching the video hi in this tutorial we will learn how to change file format of library office documents into windows compatible format so let's start doing it so when we talk about spreadsheets in library office the format is ODS while in MS office it's XLS in pres for presentations it's ODP and in MS office it's PPT while for Word documents the format is ODT and in MS Office the format is DOC. Since XLS, PPT and DOC are most widely supported among the applications, so we will learn how to convert Library Office's format into MS Office compatible format. So let's do it. So all, in, all we need to do is go to file then click on save as and we will show you the location where you want to save it and then in the file type choose Microsoft Excel 97 2000 XP 2003 dot XLS so it can be either XLS or it will be word 
97-2000xp-2003.doc और प्रेस माइक्रोसॉफ्ट पावरपॉइंट 97-2000xp-2003.ppt सो क्लिक देयर एंड एंड एनी नेम यू वांट ऑफ द डॉक्यूमेंट एंड देन क्लिक ऑन सेव सो नाउ as we can see the file name is file formats dot xls which means that the file has been successfully converted into a ms office compatible format which further means that it will be it will open in any application which supports ms office formats without any problem thank you for watching the video hi welcome to library office calc tutorial in this tutorial we will learn what is LibreOffice Calc and why do we use Calc? So whenever we need a spreadsheet software, we think of Excel. But Excel is a proprietary software for which you have to pay. While LibreOffice Calc is an open source free software which you can download anytime from LibreOffice website. and the updates are released so frequently that you will get lots of features for free every month. So let's explore what is LibreOffice Calc and learn how to use it. So this is how LibreOffice Calc looks like. We have lots of rows and columns. Each has multiple cells. So each individual is known as a cell so this selected item is a cell and if you can see there is this column which is highlighted B while there is three which is highlighted so these are corresponding rows and columns of this particular cell so if you want to notate it it will be B3 or this random cell will be E10 this will be G16 this is how notation in chess uh, done so if you use or play chess then this is how we do notation in library office calc as well or excel for that matter so in the next video we will learn how to do simple calculations in library office calc thank you for watching the video hi in this tutorial we will learn how to do simple calculations in calc so by calculations we mean addition multiplication subtraction and division so let's start doing it so we have this spreadsheet and we want to do some calculations so let's try it so we have a1 which is 3 then we have 5 9 10 now we want to add these up so so equals to then the functions name and then in bracket all the numbers all the cells notation has to be entered each separated by a comma so just select the first one and drag it till the last and press enter here here we can see it's equal to the functions name then in bracket the first cell then a colon and then the last cell and then the bracket is closed so this colon represents that all the values from a1 to a4 will be used now let's enter some random values in this as well now just copy 
this cell and paste it over here so what it does is it will change the values accordingly but corresponding to this column so for example here we had a1 to a4 but here we have b1 to b4 so it automatically changed the columns numbers corresponding to the column and then it used exactly same method same formula now we want to subtract b or a from b so let's do it let's type equals to then b5 minus select this and it will show the value which is 24 now if we want to see how to divide this value with 100 all you need to do is just type equals to then select this cell and then type divide then 100 and press enter so it's 2.04 so this is how we do the basic calculations in either Microsoft Excel or LibreOffice Calc thank you for watching the video hi in this tutorial we will learn how to add border in a table and how to change thickness of the border of that table so let's start doing it so suppose we have this table it's called the price comparison so we need to add a border to it so we'll just select it and then we will click on borders and select any of these so for now we need to add border to all the outside as well as the borders inside then we will select them and then we will right click and then go to format cells over here we will go to borders and then we will select the width let's say we we want 10 now it will be really thick which we really don't want but just to check if that works we did that now we will just keep it 0.8 and it looks reasonably good so this is how we add borders in in a table in library office calc and this holds valid for microsoft excel as well thank you for watching the video hi in this video we will learn how to delete a table how to delete a row and how to delete a column so first step is to create a table now let's say we want to create a table of six rows and six columns so this is how we have created a table of six rows and six columns now we want to delete a few rows let's say we want 3 and 5 to be deleted then just set your focus on third and click on delete row then click on fifth row and click on delete row likewise if you want to delete the column click on delete column and then click on delete column so you need to ensure that your focus your cursor should be on the cell corresponding to the row you want to row or column you want to delete so this is how we have deleted the columns and rows of the table now if you want to delete the table itself then just go to table then delete and then table so entire table will be deleted thank you for watching the video hi in this video we will learn how to change the thickness of border of a table 
So first step is to create a table. So let's say we are creating a table of six rows and six columns. Now we have now we are numbering the rows. So to change the thickness of the table tables border we need to select the table first and then we need to go to table properties which is located at the bottom side where shortcuts are available now click on that and here near line arrangement we can see default then there is there are five options so first is set no borders so in case we want the thickness to be invisible then we will select the first one very frequently used when we are trying to give the document a structure through table now second option is set outer outer border only so in case you want the outer border only without any inner lines then you will select that third is set the outer border and the cent horizontal center line fourth is set outer border as well as all the inner lines and fifth is set outer border without changing inner line so in case we have some specific um, thickness so it won't change it at all so we will be selecting all cells or set outside border and all the inner lines and then change the thickness to let's say 8 now as we can see the the width of the border has thickened up this is what we were looking for ideally it should be 0.5 to 1 just to make sure that the printout looks really beautiful now if you want to make the thick borders invisible then all we need to do is go to borders and click on invisible one as we can see the uh, we can't see uh, we can't see the borders also these lines are just for um, viewing purpose and uh, in the printout they won't be visible at all thank you for watching the video hi in this tutorial we will learn how to do the basic formatting of text in LibreOffice calc so we can see we have lots of cells and cells have got different data and these data are overflowing to other cells as well since this is this data is con contained in 8b but we can see it overflowed to 8d so to remove it or to wrap the text and to contain the text within this 8b all we need to do is select the select the cells and then press right button of your mouse and then select format cells and then go to alignment and then check on wrap text automatically and check hyper hyper active and then press ok so now we can see that the text is not not overflowing any longer also it is contained within this particular cell if you want to increase the width of this cell we can just drag it till there also we can see there are many extra white spaces so just to reduce it or to remove it we can just select the text or cells and press right button of the mouse and then click on optimal row height so now those extra spaces are removed so in case you have some random spaces between your rows let's say we have them now so this is disordered so just select the text or cells and then press right button of your mouse and then click on format cells and here then go to optimal row height 
and press ok so now those spaces have been reduced so if you want to specify the unit or the distance between each row then just select the rows and then press right key right, right button of your mouse and then select row height and here specify the value so let's say we want the spaces between the spaces of row so the row height should be one centimeter so just press ok now we have each rows having the size or height of one centimeter now if you want we can create border to make it look better and we can just have them bold we can also have them center aligned also to make it look better we can change the border size so let's make the border size 0.75 which is which looks really great on paper so this is how, how our table will look like we can also add color to it so let's say we want the background color of the top row so now we have added that as well so this is how we can make our table tableau data look really beautiful and presentable thank you for watching the video data can be presented in pictorial form using charts so let's learn how to create beautiful charts using LibreOffice Calc. So we will be getting the data from the table. So here we have the table from which we will be taking the data. <coughs> so click on chart icon. And then we will be shown this chart wizard. So first step is to select the chart type. Here we have to select column you can choose any but we will be starting with column then click on next and then we have to define the data range here first of all we will be comparing between the quantities of each product so we will be selecting these two columns and then we are shown the changes so here we have apple banana all the fruits all the products name on the x-axis and quantity on the y-axis so first row is acting as column as well as first column is also acting as column so we can see it over here apple banana cherry these are this is the first column while products name and quantity is the first row now we will be clicking on next so here we can see the data series and then click on next and here we can provide the title so we can say fruits quantity comparison and then we can just add or also we can add quantity over here Oh no, the quantity should be on the y axis. Yeah, so we can see it over here. While we can define, we can just type drugs name on the x axis. Also, we can just move the legend. This is called legend. legend. Uh, we can move it to top and then we have got our first chart which shows comparison between quantities of each product so now we will be creating a chart in which we will be comparing between price and quantity of the products so just click on chart again and here we will be selecting column and then 
we will be defining the data range here we will be selecting three columns now we are shown the legend over here while x-axis shows the drugs name and y-axis shows the quantity then click on next here we can see the data series uh, we have quantity and price per unit as the data series then click on next and we are shown chart elements so we will, we will just be typing title fruits quantity and price comparison and then we will be having x axis quantity and price so it's not x axis but it is y axis and here it will be drugs name so now we can see drugs name is on the bottom uh, on the x axis while the quantity and price are on the left axis on the y axis and we can see the blue one denotes quantity while the orange one denotes price per unit so click on finish now we have this chart which shows comparison between two units which is quantity and price of the products you can also stretch it to up, make it appear larger so this is how we create charts in LibreOffice Calc thank you for watching the tutorial